We are going to be looking at something in statistics called z-scores. They are very useful, as you'll find out in just a couple of minutes here. A definition of understanding z-scores or what z-scores are. A z-score distribution has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. What you'll find out in a little while is that z-scores are a way of standardizing all statistics. So, for example, if I had a z-score of 0 for my height, I have an average height. If I have a z-score of 0 for my IQ, I have an average IQ. If I had a z-score of 0 for my weight, I am an average weight. Uh, so that's kind of how z-scores are used to standardize. Um, a z-score indicates the number of standard deviations a value is from the mean. A positive z-score indicates that the value is above the mean. So if I had a z-score of 2, that would mean that I am two standard deviations above average. It uh, doesn't matter what that particular statistics is. So if I had a standard deviation of 2 uh, for my, or sorry, a z-score of 2 for my height, I'd be two standard deviations above the average height. If it was for weight, I'd be two standard deviations above the average weight. If it was for IQ, I'd be two standard deviations above uh, <clears throat> the average IQ, etc., etc. And a negative z-score indicates that the value is below the mean. So if you have a negative z-score for something, you are below average. So a negative 1 uh, Z score for weight would mean you are one standard deviation below the average weight. Uh, let's look at how that applies and what you'll notice here in the normal distribution is that the middle or the average is zero and it goes up by whole numbers or integers and down by integers. Question number one here says indicate on the standard normal distribution approximately where a Z score of 1.65 would lie. What that means is that it is 1.65 standard deviations above average. So 1.65 would roughly be right there. Okay. <clears throat> Next, indicate on the standard normal distribution where a Z score of negative 0.82 would lie. So that is somewhere roughly it's not quite one standard deviation below the mean, it's 0 0.82 standard deviations below the mean, so it's roughly there. Okay, so that would be someone that is below, or a statistic that's below the mean. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is a z-score table. A z-score table indicates the percent of data below or to the left of that z-score. You can find this in your textbook if you're in my class, uh, or online, or have a paper copy. But a z-score table looks like this. It looks like a very large, scary piece of uh, just numbers and graphs, etc. But what it consists of is negative z-scores and positive z-scores. And I'm, my goal here is just to show you how to use this particular z-score table. So let's go back to what we're doing here. <clears throat> and do a few questions. So using a z-score table, determine the percent of data below or to the left of a z-score of 1.38. Now, what you'll notice down here is that having a normal distribution is helpful for estimating, and that'll help me explain what this actually means. So if you had a z-score of 1.38, you would fall roughly there. So I would guess, so here would be 50% of data that's below the mean. And then this part here that I'm highlighting in red would be 34 plus a little bit. So I'd say maybe it's roughly 50% plus, so below a 1.35 z-score, plus maybe another, I don't know, 40. So my guess here might be roughly 90% as my, as my percent of data below a z-score of 1.38, sorry. <clears throat> now here's how you can, you can use your z-score table. So if I go to the z-score table, and in blue here are the z-scores. A z-score of 1.38 is positive, so I'll go down to the positive part. Uh, in the first column here, it's a z-score to the nearest tenth, so here's 1.3, but I'm looking for 1.38. And in the horizontal row at the top is the hundredth, so 1.38. And if we look crossways here and down here, we have 0 0.9162, and that is the percent of data below that particular z-score. So if I go back here, I have what I found from the z-score table was 0 0.9162, which is equivalent to 91.62%. So my, my guess, which was 90%, was a little bit off, but there's 91.62% of data below that z-score. 
Uh, if it's, so it's, next question says, determine the percent of data above or to the right of a z-score of negative 0.04. So negative 0.04 is just below average. That's roughly here. So that's a z-score of negative 0.04. Now it says to determine the percent above. So the percent that would be above that particular <clears throat> z-score, well, this would be 50%. So it's a little bit more than 50%. My guess is going to be roughly 52%. Now what z-score tables always do is give you the percent that's below or to the left of that z-score. So if I look for negative 0.04 on my z-score table, what that's going to give me, so I'm going to go to the negative z-score side, so right there, negative z-scores, uh, negative 0.04, so here's negative 0.0, there's our nearest tenth, and here's negative 0.04, so if we go from there to there, what you'll find out, if you look at the z-score table, is that 48.4% of data is... <clears throat> below. So below that z-score, that's 48.4% of data. So we have 48.4% is below. But the question stated here, determine the percent of data above. So above would just be 100 minus that. So 100 minus 48.4 would be 51.6% would be above that particular z-score. Number three says the following, determine the percent of data between z-scores of negative 0.04 and 1.38. So if we knew in this case, and we've done these previous two questions, that a z-score of 1.38 had a total of, and let me just highlight this, had a total of 91.62% below it. And if we knew that a score of or a z-score of negative 0.04 had a total of, as we found from the z-score table, 48.4% below it, then between the two, you take the difference or subtract those two percentages. So it would be 91.62, a little bit of a complicated concept at first, minus the 48.4 and that would be the percent of people below those two z's or between those two z scores so 91.62 minus 48.4 would be there's a total of 43.22 percent of people between those two z scores okay all right, uh, you can also use z-score tables to do the reverse of what we've been doing. In other words, you might be giving a per given a percentage and asked to find a z-score, and that's what we'll do at the end part of this particular lesson here. So it says, determine the z-score that has 45% of data below or to the left of it. So if we look visually here, I would guess that maybe 45% of data, if I was just estimating, we know 50% would be right at the mean, I'm guessing this is roughly 45% of data. So I'm going to guess that my z-score is roughly, again, this is just an estimate, I'm going to guess 0. Point, has to be a negative z-score because it's below average. So negative 0. 0.2, that's just my guess. Here's how we use the actual z-score table to do this. Instead of looking at the first column and row at the z-scores, we're going to look at the percents inside, and we're going to look for 45% on the inside of the z-score table. So if I look for 45%, we already know that it's going to be a negative z-score. So I'm in the negative z-score part, and I'm going to look for 45%. So 45% is close to two values. It's one of these two, right? We've got 44.83% and 45.22%. I'm just going to choose this one. It doesn't matter too much. It might be right in between the two if you want to be incredibly accurate. And I can work my way outwards to the z-score. So here is to the nearest tenth, so that's negative 0 0.1. And here's to the nearest hundredth, 2. So there we go. It's negative 0 0.12 roughly would be the z-score. And we'll do one more question here. That would be roughly negative 0 0.12 as a z-score. Finally, number 5 says determine the z-score that has 15% of data above or to the right of it. So in this particular case, 
uh, we want to know where there's 15% of data above. If we look at this carefully, if you added up the totals, you'd notice that 15% above would be roughly here or so. Okay, so this would have 15% of data above that Z score. So I'm going to guess that the Z score is roughly 1.1 or so. That's just my guess. Now, because Z score tables only deal with percents below, you have to do one little piece of work on your own and realize that if it's 15% above, it would be 85% below. So we're actually looking for 85% on the positive, because we know that this is a positive z-score. Let's go to the positive z-score table and look for 85%. Because that would be where there's 15% above. So if I look for 85%, that looks to be roughly here. So I can go to the side column to figure out to the nearest tenth. So that's 1.0. And if I go up, that's 4. So my z-score that has 15% above it is 1.04.